تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وكريمنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين واجب الاحترام حضرات الزي وقار علماء الكرام my respected elders dear brothers beloved students assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. And choicest blessings and salutations upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, may we take the opportunity of presenting our thanks and our gratitude in the mighty court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it is purely by his fadl, by his grace and by his mercy that he has granted us an opportunity to be present here in his house during these auspicious moments of Jumatul Mubarak. May Allah accept from us our presence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this presence of ours as by the explanation of the hadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an expiation of our minor sins from the last Jum'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our humble, minute and little deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may Allah elevate our status both in this world and even in the hereafter. Ameen thumma ameen. I've had an opportunity of reciting to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Surah 49 verse number 13 And some of you may have deduced the reason as to why the selection of this particular verse from the Holy Quran. Wherever we may turn to, we can safely say that the world is in a turmoil. There are problems and there are more problems. The severity of the problems, the magnitude of the problems or the non-severity of those problems are experienced by those that are going through that problematic phase. Be it catastrophic be it of natural disaster, be it of endemics that are now classified as pandemics, whatever the situation is, be it of the xenophobia issues that you and I have witnessed and perhaps gone through some of those issues in the recent past, or be it the devastating issue that the world is witnessing today that more than 5,000 or 5,500 lives have been lost in Nepal because of the earthquake. And it is not uncommon for us to come across issues that relate to this. Natural disasters, flooding, excessive rains in other parts of the world, as recent as last week in the Indo-Pak subcontinent, as recent as last week, excessive rains, out-of-season rains, which has caused devastating problems. And today, the 1st of May, celebrated all over the world, as Workers' Day, 
And though a day has been set aside and a day observed or even celebrated on our calendars and in many parts of the world it is declared as a bank holiday and in many, many other parts of the world like you and I are experiencing today that it is a public holiday and this is supposed to be a day in which we honor the laborers and the workers of the world realistically speaking what is the impact of this holiday as it appears on the calendar and its relation to our lives it's a holiday and that's as far as we go and that's as far as we think and not long from now you will find that which is a non-holiday but its observance appears and already there is advertisements for it there is an abundance of advertising for it mother's day go down the calendar you'll have a father's day go even further on the calendar and you'll have a woman's day and there's so many days which are set aside and we have often asked this question that how does a single day or one day singled out of the calendar affect our lives or change our lives in any way whatsoever then you and I know full well that we have in terms of classification and categorization that there are two types of rights divine rights or hukukullah as we know and hukukul ibad which is known as if I can use the term that we normally use or that we so commonly use and that we are so oblivious of it that hukukul ibad can safely be translated and interpreted as human rights and maybe again if we refer to the number of holidays that appear and that we experience on the South African calendar that that also is a day which is set aside the 21st of March Human Rights Day and we know what Hukukullah what it comprises of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comprises in our belief system in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following his commands worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on various levels on various intervals various junctures Quran explicitly mentions and we also know that there are aspects in relation to human rights they may encompass various issues issues such as the equality of mankind and we know that there are many liberation struggles throughout the world in various continents how they are addressed how they are taken up how they are viewed and we also have issues that perhaps under this banner of human rights can be related to as mutual understanding and it is such a cardinal ingredient that needs to be present in our coexistence whether it is a relationship of a mother and daughter father and son somebody who's on an executive or on the hierarchy of a company and somebody who is under them and we cannot under any circumstances whatsoever exclude from this grand equation the simple aspect of cooperation there needs to be that cooperation and again let us look around us whether it is student teacher relationship the relationship between the learner and the educator 
what levels of cooperation there needs to be whether you go out and if you if you excel and you go on to other levels in the corporate world in every other sphere of life that you will find that there needs to be that cooperation existing between people and the aspect that we so sometimes become oblivious and become forgetful about yet we experience that so many times in a single day and that is friendship they all form part of this human rights aspects and how many times do we take friendship for granted sometimes we even violate the rights centered around the aspect of friendship and then we have these episodes relating to equality and non discrimination etc etc and we pick up these little terms we thrive on the new terminology given to us but we fall short of reflecting on the divine words given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as recorded for us in the holy quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhan nas o mankind without any classification without any categorization there is no sector that is being addressed there is no group that is being addressed it is not addressed to the believers as ya ayyuhan ladina amanu or those that are god fearing or those that are bearers of piety but here absolute openness and every single one is addressed here ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا That O oh mankind, indeed, we have created you male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا So that you may know one another. You may understand one another. We may begin to relate with one another. And we all know that the origin of humanity in its physical evolvement is from Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and Hazrat Bibi Hawa alayhi salam. That is our origin. The physical sequence of procreation. That's our origin. But we need to go a little further and understand that what is the origin of man in itself. And then we will begin to understand that the origin of man in fact and in reality is from dust. And if that is our worth and that is our value, then why the need of all these distinctions and why the need for all the separations and why the need for all this then we will understand that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا so that you may understand and you may begin to know what your reality is unfortunately and so very unfortunately we look at issues in a different way. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam has given us many examples. And if we take examples from within the close period of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, we will find that there are so many issues that we can take heed from, we can take a lesson from, we can relate to, and we would be able to relate with that specifically with today's day and age and say where do we stand as far as this is concerned be it the issue of xenophobia be it the issue that is related to today's day in particular if we begin to relate with this there are so many issues that we will be able to talk about but before i get there It may be 
essential for us to relate with some of the instances. We all know that there came a time when the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam himself left his place of origin or birthplace and migrated from Makkah to Al-Mukarramah to Medina to Al-Munawwara. What a grand migration that is. And if that cannot be an everlasting example to humankind itself, to mankind itself, that here is a migration of one who is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is in fact the master of humankind, who is in fact the pride of humanity, who is in fact one who is most superior in creation, yet that most superior in creation, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, leaves his beloved home, he leaves his place or his birthplace, that place which is so loved by him, that place of which an oath is taken in the Holy Quran, that place which Allah refers to as لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد Allah takes an oath of the birthplace of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet we find the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam undertaking the journey of migration and how under what circumstances it was as close as as being as, as expulsion from Makkah to Al-Mukarramah we are aware of the details and I'm not going to go into that. But when the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam emerged from his house Mubarak and the guard that had been placed outside the house Mubarak of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and when he handed all responsibilities to Sayyidina Ali karram Allah ta'ala wa jahul kareem and exited from his home he walked to the house of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was awaiting for the arrival for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, O Abu Bakr, this time of the night, in the dark hours, and you outside the house? And he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, you said to me, that the time will come when we have to migrate. And ever since then, I have never slept at night. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, let's go. It was understood that the journey of migration had already begun. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq did not as much as go inside the house to inform his family, his kith and kin that I am not, I am now leaving Makkah. They were foretold. They were told before that if you awake one morning and find me not outside the house, then no, I would have accompanied my Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Don't look for me. In English we say, literally with the clothes on our back, or he left literally with the clothes on his back from his house. Or this is what was the atrocities of this, that country. And we know history teaches us. And we can relate with various exodus of humankind from various countries, regions, territories where they had to leave. Leave behind their belongings and move on for safer havens. History is full of this. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam undertook this journey of migration. With what? There were no belongings. There was nothing that they carried. There was nothing that they took with them. There was no what you and I can call as the ways for the road or patkos. There was none of that. They just left. And even in the cave of Thor, the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu that those words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recorded for us today even in the Holy Quran. لا تحزن إن الله معنا Do not be afraid. Allah is with us. Their absolute trust was in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a model lesson given even under such circumstances by the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. 
And when they returned, victorious on Makkah al Mukarramah, years later, and some Sahaba Kiram went to the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam because they entered into Makkah from different angles, from different streets, from different valleys, and as they came into Makkah al Mukarramah, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great warrior of Islam, when he saw that the Meccan people were now hiding behind walls, running into their homes, seeking refuge from the Muslims, and he said to them, Do you forget what you had done to us yesterday? Have you forgotten your actions of yesteryear? Were you not the people that laid Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu on burning coal? Were you not the very people that tortured the laborers? Were you not the very people that did not give the due rights of the slaves? Come out of your houses, let us deal with you. Somebody took the statement of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu and they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, O oh, Aqa, our master, Khalid bin Walid is taunting the people of Makkah by these words. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said that ask him to be coming to me or shall I see him? Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu came in the presence of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Today is a day where we will revere everyone. Today is a day that we have not come victorious into Makkah where we will violate the rights of one another. Today is a day where we will give rights unto them. Today is a day where we will restore dignity. Today is a day when we will give honor to our people. They are our brethren. We have come from this very place. We are not here to take revenge, but we are here to give them the way forward in life. And that's exactly what the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam practiced. That's exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. We know of the battle of Uhud. When the tooth Mubarak of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam became injured, that person was forgiven by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The lady, the old lady who would lay thorns in the path of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was forgiven. The camel that came and cried in the court of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and as the camel mumbled, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, where's the owner of this camel? And when he was brought in the presence of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, that your camel has complained to me, and the complaint is, that you are taking too much work out of this camel, and the feed that the camel receives, does not sustain the camel sufficiently. There are not many nutritions in that and there is weakness in the body of the camel. So give the dew of the camel. Did the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa not tell us that before the laborer may wipe his sweat off his forehead, give him his dues. Give him what is owed to him. If you've had an agreement, then pay what is necessary to him. But let us reflect on some of our own doings, on our workings, that how do we reciprocate with situations of this nature? Do we fulfill the teachings of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in our own actions? Do we follow on the path given, modeled an example to us by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And I want to say, that if a day like this appears on our calendar, perhaps it is a reminder to the nation. But for us, as believers, for us, as the followers of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that should be in our mind every moment of our lives, 
and that is why we say that we need to get as close as we can to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the teachings of the holy prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam and as we get close to that we will begin to understand the value of life and we will be able to share these values with others and as we encompass them within this good beautiful value system given to us by islam we will see how we flourish and we will see how attractive can islam become to those that do not have it wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shahidi tum pe har dam karono durud o salam ho nigah ikram hum pe sultan di ho nigah ikram hum pe sultan di tum pe har dam karono कोई हुसने अमल पास मेरे नहीं कोई हुसने अमल पास मेरे नहीं फस ना जाओ कयामत में मौला कहीं फस ना जाओ कयामत में मौला कहीं ऐ शफी ये उमम लाज रखना तुम्हें तुम पे हर दम करोड़ो दुरुदो सलाम ताजदार हरम ऐश शाहिदी तुम पे हर दम करोड़ो फिक्र उम्मत मेरा तो करो तेरे फिक्र उम्मत मेरा तो करो तेरे आसियों के गुनाहों को दो तेरे जी आसियों के गुनाहों को दो तेरे तुम पे कुल बान जा मेरे माज भी तुम पे हर दम करोड़ो दुरुदो सलाम ताजदार हरम ऐश शाहिदी तुम पे हर दम करोड़ो दुरुदो सलाम हो निगा करम मुझ पे सुल्तान दी तुम पे हर दम करोड़ो दुरुदो सलाम अल्फातिहा اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وكريمنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اللهم ربنا اتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا امورنا مع الراحه لقلوبنا وابداننا والسلامه والعافيه في ديننا ودنيانا وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين ہے مرکز علم